I recall having finished my ward round, uh, walking through uh, a set of doors. For those who know Oxley's house, this would be uh, the corridors coming into the reception area and being uh, immediately confronted by uh, a young man whom I had looked after quite a few years uh, earlier. Uh, but he acted so quickly, I wasn't expecting him, uh, and he immediately began to punch me and pushed me to the floor uh, and walked back uh, very quickly and grabbed a couple of dumbbells uh, that he uh, launched forward again to uh, assault me with. I was working a long day on the ward, it was a Saturday. Um, one of our patients we have on the ward is quite dangerous when he's got an infection um, in his body. He was quite aggressive towards a couple of patients. We did try and intervene and he did settle. I was standing there and he'd gone to attack another patient. This patient is also quite unwell on the ward and he was drinking a cup of tea. As he'd gone to attack him, the other patient has thrown the hot cup of tea towards this patient, but unfortunately I was in his eye line and I got it down my arm. Uh, we had a patient that is, uh, I think he was on section three and um, has a, an accompanied leave. So we sent him out. So when he came back, as per protocol, we had to search him. So when he came in, we tried to search him uh, by the door. Then he pushed past two of my colleagues that were searching him, then ran to his room. He closed the room behind us. So me and my colleagues and the two other guys came. We knocked on the door to kind of carry out the search. Then he opened the door slightly and punched me on my face. It was unprovoked punch. Um, we just didn't know what we were supposed to do. So it wasn't under the influence of any alcohol or drugs, so it was just quite unprovoked. So firstly, just uh, thank you for coming. Um, we would set this meeting up for, for a couple of reasons. Um, as you, you, you will know what the results of the staff survey uh, were when they came out in March, 20, March of this year. Um, and what that showed is that over the course of about four years, the levels of violence and aggression that our staff are reporting and their feeling about lack of support is worsening. So, uh, of course, I was shocked uh, and, and really needed time to compose myself. Uh, I don't think until then I had ever been assaulted in that way. Uh, and, of course, um, a number of colleagues in the building were quite supportive, spent time just checking I was okay, took some time out in my office, uh, and then we called uh, the police. One of the nurses I worked with, one of the charge nurses, she noticed that my arm was really red and it was getting redder and redder. And she then told me to go around to urgent care just to get it checked because it was classed as an assault. Um, I went around to urgent care, got seen quite quickly because I was on duty and they had to dress it with medication, goals, things like that, and had to keep it on for 24 hours. I have to give thanks to my colleagues from other ward and my colleagues on the ward as well, because they were there. We had a debriefing, we had a chat. Um, in fact, some of them wanted me to go home. I said, well, um, I had to complete my shift. So I stayed, because we were shut off staff in the first place. So I stayed, and then I think that was it. I was off for a couple of days. Um, I didn't get a call from anyone except for like social media messages kind of thing. I didn't get a phone call um, like officially from anyone. I came back to work on probably the Tuesday and no one had said anything to me. It was handed over regularly so people were asking me but unfortunately management weren't. Um, I spoke to my manager and she wasn't aware even though I did complete a day text, I put it in as um, a level three incident because it did involve me being admitted around to urgent care more than once. Uh, I think I recall my manager was not around that, but she called me, she called me from home to ask me if I was okay. okay I think she did. I remember now she called me, if I, asked me if I was okay. I think that was uh, yeah, as far as it went. Uh, what was quite clear from staff and the feedback that they were receiving is that they would like in most cases, to always receive a particular kind of response. So some said, um, so many of them said, for example, in wards, that we don't get uh, five minutes to sort of, you know, de-stress after after incident takes place, which you would think would be quite an easy thing to do. But it doesn't always happen. Some say the ward manager always calls me after the incident. It doesn't always happen. 
Uh, some have said that it's really good when I'm off sick after an incident, that I get a call from the ward manager or somebody within the team. Doesn't always happen. Some have said it would be nice when I come back from work to get, to get a, a, you know, for, for the AD or the service manager or the matron to come over and see me and say, are you okay? Glad to see that you're back. Again, not consistent. And the idea was to come up with a consistent approach that we could always apply. And then also look at other ideas that we could bring in that would help in supporting staff. Just a phone call or an email just to say, oh, I heard this happened. I hope everything's okay. Anything we can do. Because I know for some people it could affect their mental health. It could affect the, their um, rapport that they've got with a patient. And it, it's a shame to, to see that people are scared to go towards certain patients if they are highly aggressive. But the critical thing has got to be that as a clinical team, but in particular the consultant has got to be assertive in making sure that no one uh, is treated as though they've come to work to be uh, a punch bag or whatever. We recognise that people who are unwell may uh, be violent, uh, but I think it's useful that we make it very clear to them that we're happy to support them and help them through it, but not use staff uh, as uh, their punch bag. It's always, always important for us to have the briefing, you know, uh, have a sit down and talk about the incident. Um, we, the staff do that, we should always expect that from the management. If something like that happens, I know where everybody's busy, but we have to work in an environment where we have to be protected. It's kind of made me a bit more wary and observant that this isn't okay. Although mental health is aggression is one of the characteristics, we shouldn't we should be supportive of one another, help each other to deal with deal with it and cope with it, but also try and reduce it. I think that every individual uh, is different and therefore what people would need or the level of support or how they respond will vary. And so I don't want to sit here and prescribe, but one of the things I do know is that just being available to someone who has been assaulted, that's really, really important. And supporting them and trying to check whether there's any more, that they, uh, any more support that they need. Uh, and this isn't just on the day or the week following, but uh, continuously thereafter. But unless we change the message within the organization for our staff and say, it's not okay for our staff to be treated violently, to be treated to violence and abuse, to be treated to, uh, you know, to be on the receiving end of racial or homophobic abuse, this will continue. I think I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I think it's also made me more aware uh, of other people, you know, uh, in terms of how I support them in terms of how uh, we, I prioritise those risks uh, in clinical work. I now feel that I'm, I've gotten, not gotten over it, but I've moved past it and that I did everything right and I was saving, helping another patient from being hurt. So I felt that that was my duty. I had looked at data on, in terms of violent incidents within the NHS and typically in one year, there are about 70,000 incidents of violence and assault. 70% of that takes place in mental health units. And when staff were asked about it, what they said is that, oh, this is just part of the day job. Can't do anything about it. This, if I come to work, I have to expect that this is going to happen. And that's clearly, clearly not right. So part of it, part of the whole comms program is about changing that message to say, it's actually never okay for our staff to be treated in this way, and we must support them when this happens.